you should stand assured because his word has declared that God is working something out in you. Now the blessing in all of that is, is as this stuff is coming on us, you can stand on the promise of God. God said he will not allow. Oh, come on, somebody. Wait, let me ask you a question. Who's ultimately in charge? Who's ultimately in charge? God. One more time. Who is ultimately in charge? God. God said, I will not allow any more to be placed on you than that which you are able to bear. To bear. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So we can do it. Yeah. We can bear up under this. We, so, so instead of complaining, instead of crying and griping, we ought to just go on and push our way on through. I went on a bike ride with my grandson the other day. Matter of fact, just yesterday. Yeah. Took him out on the bike ride and we was going through some rough terrain and well he kept stopping for the whole This is just too hard. I can't do this. And he started walking. I said, man, I don't go on no bike ride to walk my bike. <laughs> If I'm going on a bike ride, I'm going to ride my bike, so you need to get back up on it. He'd get up on it, he'd make two pedals, he'd fall off. He wanted to cry. I said, quit crying. He said, I ain't crying. I said, well, quit whining then. He said, <laughs> But you know, an interesting thing happened after about the third or fourth attempt. He found himself pedaling, right? I had to try to catch up with him. But see, he didn't know he could do it until he kept trying. Right. See, say so many of us, we give up mm -hmm. too easy. God will give you the strength that you need to make it. Let me talk to you real briefly as the time winds up. We're going to close out. But there's, there, there's seven things I want to look at. Seven no mores, if I can call them that. Seven no mores. That's how I know I can stand uh, with no fear or contradiction at hard times. Amen. We'll be over. Because of those seven no mores that God spoke of in this book of Revelation. The first thing he touched on, remember right there in verse 22, I mean chapter 22, he said there'll be no more sea. No more sea. No more sea. Well, what does that mean? What exactly what does that mean when he, when he makes this reference to there being no more sea? Well, let's look at the characteristics of the sea. The sea, the sea is constantly moving. So unstable. You know, they talk about a, a, the calm of the sea. But the calm of the sea is, is the exception, not the norm. The norm is usually an up and down. It's a rough and tumble talk by every wave and wind. The, the, the sea uh, indicates instability. Yes, but the sea also separates, too. If you want to go from here to Hawaii, now you get in your car and drive to L.A. But if you want to make a right turn to go to Hawaii, the sea separates. It won't allow you to cross. The sea separates. So John says, God gives John the word to say that there'll be no more sea. In other words, what he's saying, because he, he identified it later, he goes on to explain it later. He said there'll be no more separation. There'll be no more separation. See, in this life down here now, even though we know that God is right there, an ever-present help in time of trouble, we know that God is as close as you're crying out to him. But there's still there's something about I'm right here, and God's up there that when I need him, I know I can call out to him. But there still seems to be a separate, come on, somebody. A little separation there. I mean, it was the same thing that the disciples went through. When they was walking with Jesus and talking with him, they knew that everything was supplied. When they got hungry, Jesus supplied. When the taxes needed to be paid, he sent them fishing. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And everything was supplied for them, but when Jesus was taken away, that's when they got despair. That's when they got despair and confused because now the supply, their source, wasn't there. There was a separation. There was a separation. Just like a lot of times when we have loved ones and, and those loved ones are, are called home, we can know that they're in the Lord. We can know that they love the Lord, but still, that's separate. Yeah, that's right. that's yeah. separation. Mm -hmm. it causes heartache. But, but John is telling us, he said, listen, no, there won't be no more separation. Talk about no more sea. Now, reference a lot of times, the reference to that sea is that, that space between earth and heaven. All of that sky up there, that uh, Apollo 18 and a 13 and 50, all them other numbers, all them Apollo rockets and, 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 and them, them Challenger space shuttles and all of that stuff. They went flying up in there. That's the sea he's talking about, that there'll be no more. Heaven won't be way up there. And us way. He said the sea will be no more. That God's heaven will be a new heaven. And the heaven will come down and be on earth. And, and God will dwell right here with us. Just like I can go sit down next to Sister Gordon. Sit down next to Brother Rocket. And come by and sit by my prayer word to Sister. God said I'm going to be right there with you. I'll sit with you, Kim. And you can ask me anything you want. But see, you can ask Pastor some questions that I don't have an answer to. But when you sit next to God. No more. No more sin. No more sin. And, and, and I like sin because once God ends that separation, 
and God comes down, amen, and, and makes his dwelling place with man. I like the next three, it seems like he just knocked them all out. Like, like with one big old knockout punch, one of them big old hell mirror, boom, knock the next three out because he said, ain't gonna be no more sorrow. Oh, come on, somebody. Now I got your Bible in front. Don't make me go back up there. Help me. What it say? What it say? Tell me what it say. He said, no more sorrow. No more pain. No more crying. Come on, we're talking about a land of no more. Can you imagine being in a place in your life where there's no more sorrow? Listen, sorrow ain't always what somebody else is doing to you. Let's speak it. Sometimes I make me sorrowful. <laughs> Look, I know I knew better than to do that. <laughs> Why let them talk me into that? <laughs> no more sorrow. No more. No more sorrow. No, none of that stuff that, that, that society is doing to you. None of them boxes that people try to pigeonhole and put you in. No more. No more. We're talking about an end. End of hard time. And if there's no more sorrow, he said there ain't gonna be no more crying. Well, come on, because you ain't got nothing to cry about. <laughs> you know, I, I find it interesting because in that first part I heard people talk about, and God will wipe the tear away from your eye. You know, like every time you start bawling, God gonna come over. No. No. Back that thing up. God gonna come down here, he's gonna make his place with us, and he's gonna walk by and he's gonna say, your tears is white. Your tears is white. Ain't no more crying now. Oh, and man up. Ain't no more crying now. There be no more crying. He won't have to continuously wipe your tears just one touch from the master's hand. All my trouble. All my sorrow. All my worry. All my pain. All that shit. And maybe 
speaks, everybody listen. Everybody that got some money to invest. If you ain't got no money to invest, you really don't care. What E.H. Hutton got to say? I'm trying to get bread and water right now. I'm trying to keep a roof over my head right now. But then what does he say? As you read down, I think it's somewhere around the 6th or 7th verse of this same chapter, in the 21st chapter. Jesus declared, he said, look, it's done. He said, it's done. I've done it already. I paid the price for you. I paid your admission. All you got to do is get in line at the gate and come on through. All you got to do is just show your little armband and you can ride any ride in here you want to. You can have anything in here you want. All you got to do is show your armband that you belong to me. He said, it's done. But somebody said, but I can't afford the admission. But what did he say here? He said, he declared anyone that's thirsty, come on. Let me go back right here. Y'all ain't trying to help me. Y'all, come on, thank you, Sister Gord. He said, anybody thirsty, come on and drink without price. I ain't going to charge you. All I want you to do is just come. 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 All ye that labor, heavy laden. Come. Now, now, if I ask for a show of hand, everybody hand from youngest to oldest ought to be up on that one because all of us have found ourselves in that situation. Well, he's declaring an end of hard times. He said, anybody that want to come. Yes, yes, yes. How many of you have ever received an invitation like that? I, I get these invitations every once in a while. I don't know. Somebody must think I got some money. I don't know what that's all about. But anyway, I get these things in the mail, and they invite me to these uh, financial seminars and stuff like that. And it's din and, uh, complimentary dinner. All you got to do is show up with your ticket. That's what God is saying to us. Yes, yes. Just <clears throat> come. Come. You that thirsty. You that are hungry. Come. You know, we, we answer that call for our physical body. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My grace, I'm going to go back to that bike ride again. My grace, I, he tried to, tried to act like he was going to fall out, Sister Mine. <laughs> Gotta love it. Julia Waldorf, Julia Waldorf.com. Ciao.